Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab today. And now we've got another QLC SSD review, another end user client uh, SSD. This one from Sabrent. This is the uh, Q4, Rocket Q4 QLC SSD that uses the Gen 4 interface, which is pretty interesting for a capacity oriented drive. Yeah, there's not a lot of, actually, I should say there's not any other Gen 4 QLC product that we've uh, seen to date. So it's kind of exciting seeing one that enters the space, although if it makes a difference, that's uh, yet to be determined. Yeah, I mean, it'll help you theoretically on the burst short term kind of read write hits on, on the interface side. And Sabrent's done a really good job historically in terms of their design. I've already taken out this out of the little box, but it's a little metal case, and there's no one that that classes up their drives quite like Sabrent. No, they have the nicest cases for their SSDs. Yes, and it doesn't help you in terms of performance, and once you take the drive out, you'll probably throw it away, or maybe... It holds a pack of gum, perhaps? I was going to say something else for college students. It might hold something that rolls up nicely. Possibly, yes. Anyway, Same. so if, when you, you pop open this little metal coffin, you've got your drive in here, and and uh, you know they do a nice job with it. It looks good. It's a double-sided drive. Ours is a four terabyte model. This comes in up to eight, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, so the drive looks nice, and then they've also got this uh, massive heat sink that we've seen in other products from uh, from Sabrent. They have a gold one that goes with their their rocket, and it's just a big beefy piece of metal with the uh, nice little copper ends to it. It looks pretty sweet. It looks pretty sweet, although. I mean, with this particular drive, it's not like it doesn't include a really nice stout copper embedded heatsink. On the label itself. Yeah, so I think in most scenarios, um, the heatsink, while, um, while it definitely can draw heat off the device, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there's going to be a situation where that drive specifically will be getting hot enough. To no, not, not really, but you can put the little... You put the little dude in here, and put this guy in here, and there's some screws, and you put it all together. And if you've got an open case, it'll look pretty cool. Now, it doesn't light up, so you won't get those extra IOPS or FPSs or whatever the gamers want these days. Um, but uh, overall, it's pretty cool, and it comes with a micro screwdriver, which I think is pretty awesome. Those are always fantastic. Yeah, so from a, from a design standpoint, pretty usual. Like I said, though, it is two-sided, so that may be somewhat limiting in certain notebook scenarios, the ultralights or the, the ultra-thins. Uh, but in most cases, I think we're going to see this go in as a secondary drive in larger PCs. Definitely. Yeah. Although, spoiler, it does have a pretty nice performance profile. And actually, let's get into some of that now. So starting out, we've got a uh, a, a blow-up, a blow-out, a... Break away? What is this? What is this thing called? Break apart? Perhaps? No, it's uh, exploded view. Yes, exploded, exploded view. Exploded view. I was thinking about those uh, those pants when the, like the NBA guys get up and just rip off their pants. Uh, I that wasn't really on my mind initially. <laughs> So it, we've got, uh, this is from the Sabrent site. And I think this is kind of neat just to illustrate the parts. Of course, they've got the dedicated cache, which uh, gives this guy a little bit extra boost from the performance standpoint. Your Fizon controller, your QLC NAND, all the goodies, and the vaunted uh, heat dissipation label that you're so proud of. Yes. And the uh, detailed spec sheet isn't exactly available on the site, but they do highlight the capabilities. And here on that 4,900 megabytes per second read is where you can blow past the limit of the Gen 3 interface. Yeah, although even for uh, a traditional consumer product, hitting those, it's really in the fringe areas. And with QLC, you're, that sliver of where performance is going to be really high, I'm not sure most people are going to see it. Yeah, probably not, but it's Gen 4. All new drives are going to be Gen 4. I'd be shocked if we saw a new product released from here on out that's Gen 3. There's just no reason for it to be, right? Yeah, probably not. I mean, uh, Hynix had one, but uh, really a lot of them have just moved on to uh, Gen 4. Yeah, and even they were kind of at the edge with that gold P31. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is also fun because they've got the SATA hard drive on the chart, which, uh, gosh, I just haven't seen that compared to SSDs in a while, but again... This is QLC that's looking to be the capacity replacement, maybe a primary drive for mainstream people that are you know, largely email and Facebook would be okay too. Yeah. All right, so what else we got here? We've got some performance numbers, and before you jump all the way into SQL here, which is interesting because we don't normally run SQL on QLC drives because they're just a little soft for that, 
Uh, just real high level, what's the uh, testing protocol for these for this drive? So we're doing um, SQL Server for test dev scenario, and um, and across our um, synthetic and application workloads, it's important to note QLC is tested a little bit differently since right. you can't a little more gently. Yes, uh, we normally test in our synthetic tests a five percent partition size. On the uh, QLC devices, we test a one percent uh, partition size. So, and do you whisper gently to it while testing? Uh, sometimes you have to caress it just to make sure it uh, stays working uh, comfortably. All right. So, caressing aside, back to SQL Server. Yeah. So our SQL Server workload, um, it's normally just destroyed a lot of the QLC products, but to date, most of the QLC devices that we've tested have been smaller and one terabyte capacity and less. So it's finally reached a point where it just doesn't obliterate the drive. And in this case, it does pretty well. It came in around seven milliseconds, which kind of came in the middle of the pack. Which, which which is surprising because everything below it are, they might be a generation old at this point in some cases, but I mean, those were primary storage drives and this is, uh, this is pretty slick to come in at seven. And then if you look up a little bit, the, uh, the rocket, uh, was three also from Sabrent, so you can kind of get a feel for the difference in the uh, more performance-oriented drive to this, but that's not much of a drop. No, it, it did really well. Okay. So our next test, we're looking at sequential read, and this is an area where we're still testing a 1% partition size, so you can't really, you can't compare this type of test to any of the other tests we do on consumer products unless it's a QLC device. Uh, but in this area, it tests a little bit above 3,500 uh, uh, megabytes per second, which came out ahead of the pack. Uh, yeah, so gosh, good. those first, those early gen QLC drives are looking pretty brutal at this point. I mean, yeah. they look bad at the time, but now they, they look destroyed. really bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next, we look at uh, random read. Again, it still edges out uh, leading the pack at that uh, in excess of around 360,000 IOPS, although the uh, Crucial P1 did have a lower latency profile. Yeah, the uh, Sabrent does get a little misbehaved there at the end, huh? Yeah. So in sequential write, it also did significantly better than the others in the pack. Uh, came in an excess of uh, 3.5 gigabytes per second. And uh, again, it, it does pretty well. Now, the uh, the last synthetic test that we're bringing into this random write, it didn't really do that well on that profile, although we're starting to get into the realm of um, what thrashes a QLC device and what doesn't. Well, I mean, you're kind of at this point, like we saw with the Gen 4 drives that we looked at before between the Samsung and the WD850. I mean, they kind of jockeyed in a couple places, but overall, you've got to say that the Sabrent, in this case, the Q4, is the most dominant QLC drive we've reviewed so far. Yeah, and for its use case, sitting as a primary capacity product and not really your main work uh, workhorse, it's going to do pretty well. Okay, so we've got um, one other thing to look at here as we've been looking at lately the uh, SSD management tools. This is a, another area where drives can differentiate themselves. And uh, uh, the last time we looked at, uh, at the Corsair one, it was a little bit brutal. Yeah, there. it's really a... If you need it, it's there, but uh, most people aren't really going to drive in, uh, dive into it on a, a normal daily basis. But we've so, got a couple things here, right? So you your temperature, your drive health, and I mean, we're at 100% still, and uh, pretty normal temperature. And it gives you some quick links into other uh, functions. So uh, upgrade firmware, um, and I believe this guy is uh, new enough that was not showing up in their system yet. Um, but right. it gives There's you probably not an update yet anyway. Yeah, it gives you a nice portal to uh, handle some of the activities that uh, instead of bringing on a CLI tool, it's a little bit more friendly. And they are one of the few that offers the uh, Acronis uh, true image to, to clone your drive if you're going to move from a, uh, an older legacy SSD or hard drive in your system to this. That's an easy way to do it. My preference is still to start fresh with a Windows install. Yeah, I'm not sure, especially on the gamer side. Uh, who is going to clone a drive versus like the fast bare metal install yeah. that uh, just don't worry about it? Yeah, but it's there if you want it. They also have a sector tool that uh, that'll help you realign. And like you said, those quick links on the right yeah, to the to the Windows to, things. Yeah, you can even bring up uh, smart details. So there's there's some usefulness here. It's not the um, best looking utility, but it's very useful. It's. Uh, Spartan yet utilitarian. My favorite part though, the drive health, I do like that visual indicator 
for people to just see am I am I bludgeoning this thing too much because people worry about that with QLC plus that plus button next to it that okay. looks like a red cross thing I don't actually think it's a button yeah it's a button it adds health every click is 10% health probably doesn't work that way well, it should be yeah maybe it doesn't work that way but overall um, nice build nice uh, nice design an okay tool set yeah capacity is up to 8 terabyte this is going to be a great little drive for anyone that wants that second slot for capacity uh, that's got a little bit of budget for it because you know it's still an SSD and it can it can work um, pretty well for mainstream compute. Now I wouldn't recommend it as a primary drive for gamers, creative pros, uh, CAD guys. Not not quite ready for that. No, but a lot of the desktops, and especially we, well, in the office right now, we have a, a Lenovo P520 on the floor, and it has two M.2 slots. So right. there's an there's an area there you can have your boot drive, you can have your capacity drive, and there's still more room in it to add additional storage. Yeah. So overall, we're big fans. We're glad we've uh, taken a look at this drive that got a favorable review on the site and uh, uh, in this video review you know we continue to be very bullish on its uh, capabilities and and think it'd be a great value add in a number of systems thanks for tuning into the review